So the first step when we start to produce uh, created emeralds, we need to prepare the source material and we need to prepare the outer clay. So we take the source material from different origins, like Russia, Brazil, Colombia, Pakistan, uh, depending on what color of the emerald we want to get. We make the source material into smaller pieces as it may come in huge rocks, and we cannot put the huge rock in autoclave, so we need to make the pieces smaller. There are two types of man-made materials. One is that we call synthetic, made totally of chemistry, so there is no any natural source material in that. And there is another type which we call lab-grown or created material. Hydrothermal emerald is one of them. For this one, we use a recrystallization process, meaning that we need to take a natural gem and just regrow it again in the furnace, in the autoclave. So once the natural stone is prepared, meaning that it's sliced right in smaller pieces, once we saw the natural material, we need to grow the seed out of it. So once we've prepared the seed, we need to attach it to the wire to put it inside the autoclave. So once everything is prepared, we put the source material inside the autoclave, then we put a special solution to create an environment for growing, then we put a seed inside, and then we just seal it. When the autoclave is full, we start to heat it, and the natural emerald start to dissolve slowly, step by step, and it goes up, mixes with solution, and start to stick to the seed that we put inside. Slowly, the crystal starts to grow. There are 19 autoclaves in each furnace, and there are only two seeds inside each autoclave. We get only two crystals from each autoclave. So once the furnace is full with autoclaves, we put 19 of them in each furnace. It takes around one month to grow a perfect hydrothermal crystal, so it's a long time. We just open the autoclave. Now it's not a seed anymore, it's a full-grown crystal. We need to slice the seed out, so we have two slabs of a full crystal that then we use for cutting, we sell as rough, anything. There is always a chance that something will go wrong because we cannot look inside the autoclave. We even cannot look inside the furnace to check how it goes. We can just try to make the perfect environment so everything goes fine. There is still some chance of mistake. Everything is scheduled, so we know when to open the furnace we may get some mistakes, so it's like a lottery every time. Because sometimes the crystal is too thin, uh, sometimes it's not full grown, sometimes we still have some natural emerald on the bottom of the autoclave, so it's not dissolved totally. If something went wrong and the crystal didn't grow fully, for example, uh, we just sort it to lower grades. We don't put it to the cycle again. If we have some natural source material on the bottom of the autoclave, we can use it again. We are producing two types of emeralds, Colombian and Zambian color. When we are looking at the color, we can see that the saturation of both materials is very strong, uh, but the tone is different. So Colombian is lighter and Zambian is darker. So we prefer to use Colombian material for bigger sizes of stones, up to 50, 60 carats weight. As you can see here, the size of Colombian slab is much bigger than the size of Zambian slab. At the factory we just visited, the autoclays are not big enough to grow a huge crystal. At our other factories where we grow Colombian material, the autoclays are bigger, so we can grow bigger material. Also, Zambian material gets too dark when it's too thick, so we don't produce too much big pieces. The hydrothermal process is the only process that allows us to make natural-looking inclusions. In Zambian material, we can see only tiny cracks, sometimes bigger cracks, while in Colombian material, you can see feathers, fingerprints, and two-phase inclusions. Here we can see an unsliced Zambian crystal. You can see the seed and the wires on which the crystal was hanging in autoclave. Normally at the factory they slice the seed out so we can get two slabs. If they don't cut the seed out, when you fasten the stone, you can see the seed as a line, which you would never find in natural gem. Here you can see the Zambian material when it's faceted. It's the top color for natural Zambian material, uh, highly saturated, with a slightly dark tone, free of inclusions. Visually, you cannot see any difference between the natural Zambian emerald and the hydrothermal one. For the Colombian material, we can see really high saturation, medium tone, not as dark as the Zambian one, 
And as we divide this material into several grades, we can get really clean stones and at the same time more natural looking included material. Now we've seen the entire process of creating a hydrothermal emerald. In the next video we'll see how we go from the rough slab to a faceted stone.